Dr. Georges, welcome to Travel Log. This is the opening ceremony of the International Nadam Festival, and it's one of the most important events for all Mongolians. Now, as you can see, they're just about to get started, and you can feel this air of anticipation just building up. We're going to be covering all the sensational activities surrounding this mega event. So get ready, saddle up, and let's rumble. Fascinating, thrilling, and exploding with colors. If there's one festival that captures the spirit of the Mongolian people, it's the ancient games Nadam. Nadam in Mongolian literally means athletics, entertainment, and togetherness. The festival has its roots back in the 13th century, since the time of Genghis Khan. It's a celebration of their epic history, their warrior culture, and nomadic lifestyle and traditions. But the real action starts after the fireworks, with mighty Mongolian men grinding and winding it out. Wrestling, horse racing, and archery are the so-called three manly games here. It takes about one hour to get here from the city, and we were driving through grasslands and hills, and it's beautiful. And all of a sudden, we come to this. It seems to appear in the middle of nowhere. Now, this is the main venue for the Nadam Festival. It's got archery, we've got horse racing, wrestling, and camel racing. Yeah, camel racing. So let's go check it out. The games are just about to begin. This is Order City's first international Nadam Festival and it's held once every two years. Nadam is the ultimate test of Mongolian manhood. One is considered a capable nomad if he possesses these qualities, courage, strength, and marksmanship. Fuka, or wrestling, horse racing, and archery are the three pillars. It's excellent in these sports, not your car keys, that gains respect in the grasslands. This is where it's at. We're in the middle of the grassland and it's wonderful. You know, the breeze is just blowing through and the sun is shining hot. Now over here is where the archery action takes place. They haven't started yet, but you can see the target board. They're just getting ready. And right out in front is where the horse racing and camel racing takes place. Now on this end, it's really interesting because you've got the wrestling competition and that gets a lot of ladies kind of excited. Now I've heard from Mongolian women that the rounder a man's belly is, the sexier he is. Mm. Well, to each his own. So I'm just going to go and check out the action here on the wrestling end. Come. Walker means wrestling in Mongolian. And Nadam, it's a rugged hand-to-hand -hand showdown for honor and the coveted championship title. The wind-burnt warriors come in all shapes and sizes. A tricky thing since there's no weight class division. You just have to fight whoever's numbers corresponds to yours from the other team. The rules are simple. No stopwatches. The first to touch the ground with a knee, elbow or back is the loser. Men don a special vest called the Zudong and the pants are called Shiden. But the Zudong have special studs that could be dangerous when it falls out during combat, exposing a nail that holds the fabric underneath it. He has been a 40-time champion with 10 years of experience under his belt. But don't be fooled by his muscles. This gentle giant is laconic and gives taxiderm replies, especially when he gave me his rendition of a summer slam dunk. Okay, 
So you think this is only for the boys? Although it's long been a male-dominated stage, more recently some fierce burly woman has stepped in the spotlight. The three manly games is now also being fought by the girls. Tell me where are you guys from? We're from Honolulu in Hawaii. All of you are from Honolulu? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's your impression of um, what you've seen so far, especially at this Nadam uh, festival? Oh, it's fantastic. Our impressions are different than what we expected. Mm -hmm. We didn't expect China to be... We knew that it was developing fast, but we didn't know there would be so much new building. And what do you think of the games? Oh, it's different. It's really different. I just love it. It's so exciting. Have, have you, um, do you have any equivalent of that in Hawaii? Or? Oh, of course not. We have no camels, for one thing. <laughs> and just seeing the camel race is so exciting. And then we just see the horse racing. Uh, everything in general is very different for us, being from the island. <laughs> it's different. As part of a shot in the arm to this year's International Nadam Festival, Order City successfully set two Guinness World Records the human domino and tug of war challenge planting itself firmly on the world map this year the boga international kickboxing award was even featured as part of efforts to draw more international sporting events to nadam mongolian men are known to be a hardy lot who grew up on horses and hunting in the great outdoors so it's natural for them to celebrate other activities which promote the same spirit of sport <laughs> The Mongolia people are never without a song or dance. In fact, they've taken celebrations to a whole new level with the International Nadam Festival. Everyone seems to be in such high spirits, and as we were twirling around the campfire, I thought this has got to be the best time to come and visit in Mongolia. My shyness melted away when someone took my hand to form a communal circle. Such is the nature of the Mongolian people. Carefree and open when it comes down to making everyone feel comfortable. All in all, they were determined to make it a night to remember. And you can easily get involved and be a part of this unique celebration too. episode of Travelogue. We journey to Order City, Inner Mongolia, and dive straight into the International Nadam Festival. This festival has its roots back in the 13th century, since the time of Genghis Khan. It's a celebration of their epic history, their warrior culture, and nomadic lifestyle. Ordis is located in the southwest part of Inner Mongolia, flanked by the Yellow River on three sides except to its south. This city is a short one and a half hour flight from Beijing, and the airport is just 38 kilometers from Dongshan district, which is the city center. There are many different types of accommodation, from backpackers lodge to five star hotels with everything you need at your fingertips. This is the Ordis Tianyu. Phoenix Hotel and it comes just like any five-star hotel. They got great architectural pieces, the place looks splendid and also they're well equipped with amenities. Now it's only 30 minutes away from the airport and there's a railway station just nearby. So let's go check out the rooms. This hotel is managed by Air China and what's really cool about it is that if you get a room stay, you get to redeem that for mileage points. And you don't need me to tell you what a good thing that is. You 
can eat it and you can wear it. And if it's one thing that Orders is famous for before its booming economy, it's cashmere. And today we're going shopping in one of the biggest malls where you can get all cashmere related products. <laughs> If there's one thing that Order City is renowned for, it's the cashmere industry. When it comes to high production standards, Orders is second to none. It produces a significant amount of the country's total cashmere products. Oh look, this is a local dairy product shop and they do meat products as well. That's what they say on the sign. But I hear that Orders is actually really famous for these awesome things. So let's go see if it's as good as they crack it out to be. Hi,你好 like a little piece, hard piece of candy. Mm. Yep, crunchy, really sweet. I like it. Very good. Yeah. It's like having a solid milk piece. This is good. Yeah, 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 this the Mato Qing, or horsehead fiddle, is an instrument that best represents the Mongolian spirit. Have one made as a souvenir as the workmanship is a speciality here in Ijin Horo District. Wow, this is fantastic. In Ijin Horo District, not only can you get ethnic clothing, but you can also find these really intricate artisan instruments. They're just gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, have a look at that. Look. This is beautiful. This is a Ma Tou Qing horse head fiddle. Sifu. Hey. Hi, Nihao. Um, can you tell me how much this Ma Tou Qing is? This can buy for 3,000 rupees. 3,000? Yes, 3,000 rupees. Why is it so expensive? It's not made of wood. It's made of wood. It's made of wood. It's made of wood. The ancient horsehead fiddle is the very symbol of the Mongolian people. As a nomadic culture, the Mongolians have depended on horses for travel and companionship, developing a spiritual connection with this faithful friend. When the sun goes down, you can chill out Mongolian style. So you can be sure of a dazzling night out in town, and not just an ordinary one. This city has even been awarded the safest city in China. So leave your worries at home and totally let your hair down. What's distinct to this region is their very concept of having a good time. Here's a Mongolian bar that defies the Western rules of entertainment. I'm here with my friends Xiao Tong and Xiao Zhao. They're here taking me to this really authentic uh, Mongolian bar. Now, it is a bar, believe it or not. They do have beer, but what's really cool about it is that we're actually drinking Mongolian milk tea. This is their very traditional milk tea, right? Yes. Is the milk tea different from the milk tea? Yes. 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 Yeah, it's really strange. They put like this little biscuit here, the dates, and they've got like the cheese and you know different sorts of like little snacks to just throw in this huge, massive bowl of milk tea, and, and it is a little bit salty. 
and it tastes different from the normal kind of milk tea. 好像比较重，对吗？比较 ，it's not flavorful， 好像比较多油、牛油的那种感觉。那这这个是有有没有什么营养的？还是很有营养，很有是可以很解油腻的。哦，所以你吃的很油腻的东西会帮助消化，还是怎么样 ？It's so weird， like we're in a bar， 在酒吧你就是喝酒，可是在这边你就吃到很健康的东西，对吗？对，干杯。It's <laughs> fantastic, you know. I mean, we're in a bar and there's yogurt, natural and fresh, with great Mongolian products here. There's biscuit, there's red date, and all, most of all, there's this fabulous milk tea. And I just can't get over it. But I kind of really quite enjoy this interesting twist to the nightlife here in Ordes. And the best part about it, well, is even great traditional Mongolian music. There's the Marto tea. It seems like you cannot separate this instrument from the Mongolian people. The horsehead fiddle was our entertainment staple for the night. The songs were mostly dedicated to their sacred animal. There's a Mongolian saying that goes, "A Mongol without a horse is like a bird without the wings." As they are of their history, the Mongolians cherish their future too. Reforestation measures over the years have helped to recover part of the grassland, and Order City leapfrogged to become one of the richest regions in China. It has one sixth of China's coal reserves, and local GDP is one of the highest in this country too. The city has also gone green, and all the lights along this highway are solar powered. It takes about one and a half hour to get to the most prized possession of Orders City from Dongshan, the city center in Orders. The mausoleum of Genghis Khan is the holy land of Mongolian history. This is the Genghis Khan mausoleum, and it's a must-see site here in Inner Mongolia. You know, Genghis Khan is so important and centrifugal to the people's life that they love him and worship him as a deity. In fact, it's like a religion on its own. So let's go and find out what it's all about. Without a shadow of a doubt, the best time to come to the mausoleum is during the spring ceremony. It's the grandest, longest, and the most crowded one of many Genghis Khan's memorial events. The stage for various kinds of rites and functions. I'm lucky to get the help of a local guide, and she speaks fantastic English to help clear up some of my questions. Ask her, can you tell me what the stone pile is about? This stone pile is called Obo in Mongolia, and Obo is very holy place for Mongols. So mm -hmm. every Mongolian person when come to Obo, they have to climb up three times uh, and uh, pick up. You can pick up three stones and throw the stone on the top of the Obo mm -hmm. to reflect their admiration. Well, can you tell me about the different colored cloths that are tied to this tree? What does it mean? Uh, these pieces of cloths are called hada, used by Mongols present to their honorable guests, or used for the sacrifice. Uh -huh. Blue for the blue sky, and white for the milk. The red for the red sun or eternal flame. Oh, yellow yeah. for the earth. Green for the green grass. Beautiful. Genghis Khan is the hero and bedrock of Mongolian culture. His name rings out as a brave warrior of epic proportions. A man who unified Mongolia through fierce battles. The Mongol Empire became the largest contiguous empire in history after his death, as his descendants continued his powerful legacy. Under the leadership of this great king, this massive empire of the 13th and 14th century had one of the most ethnically and culturally diverse makeups ever recorded. At the height of its glory. The empire occupied 22% of the Earth's surface area and had a population of over 100 million people. This two signs is three pointed iron spears connected by the five colored spears, all to the color in Mongolia. It is the symbol of the Mongolian people. Wow! We finally come here. It's a long way that we've trekked, haven't we? Let's have a look. Okay. 
Wow. Cool. Built in 1954, it's a monument to the once great Mongol warrior and contains his headdress and accessories. However, the actual body of the great Khan is not inside. Its whereabouts is still in fact a mystery. Genghis Khan is remembered as a fearless gladiator with brilliant tactics. An army could move an average distance of 20 miles a day, but a 60,000 strong Mongolian military on horsebacks could move 100 miles. This mobility and endurance was the key to their success. Genghis Khan represented the height of Mongol power. Today, his spirit lives on powerfully. Virtually every Mongolian that we encountered beamed with sheer pride when they spoke of him. I learned that their love and respect for this legendary leader runs deep in their hearts. To fully understand all the complexities of the rituals and ceremonies, you can get a tour guide who is fully fluent in Mandarin, English or Japanese.欧亚文化的生产交流这个交通发展这个人类的发展给做了巨大的贡献成吉思汗去世以后他的后裔们为了守护他的祖先的灵源专门成立了五百户这个大户的人这部分人中心耿耿的永远的守护着足足辈辈the memorial of Genghis Khan includes a sacrifice to the sun and moon. Every ritual follows its unique and complex procedure. Chanting and songs are sometimes part of the sacrifice. Fire, livestock and wine are also incorporated into this ritual. And it's believed that Genghis Khan followed shamanic practices. However, it's well documented in history that he also promoted and even embraced other religious practices in the Mongol Empire. The tolerance and acceptance of other cultures is a noteworthy quality of the Mongolian culture that we can all learn from. As the founding father of Mongolia, he showed a healthy dose of curiosity and respect for other religions and even learned philosophical and ethical lessons from them. This is an evening ceremony at the Genghis Khan Mausoleum, a bit of scaled back compared to the massive ceremony that happens in springtime. During the festivities of Nadam, people from all across the country have a chance to convene and merge at this music festival to celebrate the spirit of the games. It's one of the many up-and-coming events to promote the International Nadam Festival. Tonight, I'm going to be letting loose at a rock concert that's being held in the middle of the grassland. That is the charm and beauty of Inner Mongolia, where the landscape catches the spirit of the people and Mother Nature takes center stage. I'm so much about your